mentioned child pornography, sex cases, there may be communications. I mean, generally, you're not dealing with video surveillance in those cases, because we're talking primarily about businesses, but communications in, in sex cases and the child pornography. Uh, robberies, obviously, you go into Cumberland Farms, they have videos, the convenience stores. Um, those are the crimes that are generally committed, uh, sadly, in those businesses, on the armed robberies, homicides, and you could have a, I will say this, in motor vehicle fatalities or serious motor vehicle accidents, some of that evidence could be caught on video. Uh, if it's near a business, you would say it's on Route 6 or with the various routes in the, uh, uh, in, the in the towns and cities. Could be assistant, could be an assistance there. And again, I highlighted three of the cases. I mean, Hernandez obviously was uh, most noteworthy, but I told you that one case would not have been solved most likely without that. There's a homicide, a murder of somebody in New Bedford would not have been solved. The Haven case greatly, we were greatly assisted by that. Uh, that was a brutal murder in that case. Cars seen going by stop and shop across the bridge at say a specific time. Heading towards the residence, 25, 30 minutes later, coming back, down by the pasta house, throwing a prescription from the wall, uh, uh, there. and then the, when property was sort of pawned off or attempted to be pawned off, that was on video. So it's just continuing to move forward, professionalize it, get the uh, technology that we need to keep current with uh, what we're confronted in these cases. Tom, would you say you were behind the times previously? No. So now do you think, are you ahead? Well, I think we're ahead in the sense that, and I, and I will let Troop uh, Sergeant Bates speak to that. That's why I don't want to convey that this is, uh, that this information wasn't out there, but we're just moving forward. We're having a lab focus on this, as opposed to, I said before, they'd be downstairs, they have limited space, less privacy, more interruptions. It's a more formal focus. Uh, approach to this. So um, these cases have all been solved prior to the lab, so it's not like uh, this is an invention, but it's progress, it's moving forward, and it's dedicating resources to what is a critical aspect of investigations now. Is this something that's going to be staffed, or will it require mm -hmm. specialized training by the people who use it? Well, I think you heard me comment that, this, that we've been uh, sending the state troopers to training uh, for a number of years, because the training is ongoing uh, to deal with these technical matters. We have uh, several other troopers scheduled in the near future to get this enhanced training. Uh, so we're going to keep moving forward with it. And there's always something new out there. And we're trying to respond to it so we can do the best we can for the citizens of Bristol County. Well, I apologize if you answered this already, but how much, uh, how much money is this all going to cost? And uh, where is it coming from? Well, I did answer it. Um, it's not. I'm not going to get into the specifics of it. We buy equipment. We have the fund. We have drug forfeiture money that we can use. There's appropriate expenditure to buy this equipment. They're getting, the state police uh, uh, work it, but they are getting, obviously, paid through their normal salary. Obviously, overtime is involved at times, you know, in certain cases. But, I mean, this isn't a uh, extraordinary investment at this moment, but it's going to be ongoing, and we will find the funds to keep current. So we can keep moving forward with our uh, ability to uh, investigate the forensic evidence that is almost common to almost every case. Did you say it's in the thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars? Yeah, it's over several thousand dollars. I mean, I'm not, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be concerned about it, but it's several thousand dollars. We have the money to fund by this equipment. It's not hundreds of thousands of dollars at this moment. It's, it's several thousand dollars. And we'll continue to take that money, which is a good resource, a good way to use it, to sink it back into investigations to help us, whether it's drug case, maybe investigate and arrest some drug dealers, and um, also investigate these homicide cases. Are you saying it takes money to point. keep this up, or is there like a subscription basis? Yeah, yeah. Well, you've got to <laughs> fund updates in the equipment, but that's not a that's that's a very minor concern of mine. Can I, ask you, can I ask you about the actual capabilities of it, the, the, the changes you mentioned it briefly, uh, specifically you said enhancing video, and is that, can, is that something that's, you know, I mean you see on TV it's so absurd, we're looking at these little, you know, but I mean I know that the capability that I can buy with like my little Photoshop or something are not all that great, you, so is this lab going to 
be able to increase that kind of enhancement to, to a degree that we're going to all be odd in court? Odd? <laughs> Generally, court's not about being odd in this country. It's about putting uh, <laughs> solid evidence in. But uh, within reason, why don't you respond to that, Sasha? Sure. Um, there are advances out there that we're working on. More or less the video that we use and the stuff we do with the video is we'll synchronize the video with the timeline, with a cell phone, or with the cell tower records. As far as enhancing the actual video, you're not going to see what you see on TV. It doesn't happen that way. Just slight enhancements can be made, but tying the video with the timelines, with the cell phones, with the cell towers, it makes a nice picture for someone just to look at and see the movement of somebody or where they were. Thank you. Tom, can you say like as to when this kind of evidence began to become more common like, like investigations? Is it but like with the advent of like smartphones and tablets in the last 10 years? Of well, I'll give you my point of reference. My first time in the DA's office, uh, I don't recall getting any cell phone information. Uh, they didn't have DNA at that point. It was more blood would be compared to a blood type. This would be in the you know, early, mid-90s. And then eventually, I think, over the last five to seven years, it seems like it's really progressed. I mean, the, the, uh, well, since I've been back 10, 10 years ago, I mean, it's moved forward. It certainly wasn't the same as it was 10 years ago. I think videos are out there. So I'm not saying that everybody, this whole seeing things on video is an invention, but more and more videos in place. I mean, you see it in different walks of life, right? Everything's on video. People have videos, they, you know, taking their own personal videos a little different. So I'd say, I don't know, I think you could, I mean, I'd say clearly the last three to five years, it's become more intense. I'm not saying it didn't exist prior to that. The cell phones are a huge part of these cases. That wasn't the case before, you know. Yeah, Tom, if I may, probably six or seven years ago, it seemed to go from computers, everything was computerized, to now your computer is your phone. No one really uses a computer anymore. So right around five or six years ago, the transition went from no more desktop, no more laptops, to the phone containing your pictures, your calendar, Everything you do, everything you've been, everywhere you've been, everyone you've talked to, so it's all your computer's on you hit now. So the focus now is mainly on cell phones. And with this, Tom, your focus is more on more serious crimes, right? Would this be used in, you know, somebody shoplifted from Walmart? <clears throat> if appropriate, it could be, but again, with limited resources, uh, we can't be. Uh, hopefully, if someone's caught in video in Walmart, they'll be arrested at the scene. But right. Um, our resources are focused on the more serious and time-consuming cases. Mm -hmm. Again, we, but I don't anticipate those types of cases coming before us, but if it's appropriate in certain cases, uh, we, we certainly would uh, review it and uh, you know, look into it. How will this affect the turnaround time on digital evidence, and how important is that to some of your cases? <clears throat> I'll, I'll again defer to Sasha. Basically, it's critical in the initial stages when you're trying to tie someone to the crime. Again, I'm not going to get into the specifics of that because, but you know, when you hear when someone says, "Oh, did you hear someone was killed last night?" It's terrible, but stuff is going on the minute that happens. Uh, steps are being taken, uh, and it's critical in the beginning because uh, you're trying to can lead to individuals. Uh, an individual, individuals, and that's how these cases often are solved. And then, obviously, there's more painstaking analysis afterwards. Uh, again, there's only so many hours in the day to do some of these things. So, you know. yeah, certainly. The, the great thing about the lab and the capabilities with the equipment that the DA has purchased is it allows us to pick up because we're Bristol County. Our office is here, but if something happens in Attleboro, North Attleboro, Mansfield, wherever, we can grab our stuff, run there and set up a quick shop and work right there on the scene. So if they're interviewing people, we can have their phones, have the information retrieved from the phones to provide back to the investigators while they're conducting the investigation. So it doesn't all have to be brought here. It's nice to have our lab set up, but it's also very portable. We can get up and go and do our thing somewhere else.